Welcome, Bob Masson over here from SWF Home Inspections, and we are proud to be sponsoring today's tech session with Matt. Matt Kuchar has been a licensed real estate broker since 2000 and is the founder and CEO of Showami, a service that connects agents with other agents who can assist with buyer showings. Matt is a Keller Williams Executive's top producing agent from 2011 and has been responsible for over 700 residential real estate transactions during those years. He managed offices and real estate teams throughout the years and works with the greater Denver area. In 2015, he was listed as the top 100 agents in Colorado by volume. Matt founded Choami in 2016 as a solution to save time while also meeting your clients' needs. Please welcome Matt. Good morning, everyone. I uh, can you hear me? Just give me yes. a. Hey, Matt. Hey. Hey, Jessica. How are you doing? Doing great. I'm so excited for today. I hope everyone else is too. I am too. Um, if you don't know Jessica, uh, she is a member of the Sarasota board. She's also a licensed real estate agent. She's on the, um, the media and tech committee. She chairs that for this year. She's also a best-selling author. Uh, she has authored over seven books. One of them, the simply how, how to have a simple, simply wow life. Uh, she's a life coach, uh, been on TEDx before and, uh, just a, a great friend of mine and a mentor. So thank you, Jessica, for sharing your experience today. Well, thank you, Matt, for inviting me to go ahead and come speak with you today. And it's been so amazing this past year how so much has evolved and changed and all the conversations we've had. And today I'm excited that you're here. You had an amazing intro, uh, you know, by Bob, fantastic intro. And anyhow, you have so much insight and wisdom. What we're going to cover today, I have spoken with real estate agents at many different companies, coach, guided them, had great conversations. And today we're going to share what we've learned to benefit others. Sounds good. Let's, um, let's get, let's get started. So in the past couple of years, I think I'll kind of start back up. Uh, being a real estate agent in Florida, you get a lot of buyers from outside areas, right? And I can even remember back in the early 2000s, uh, going over and taking pictures of homes and sending them to people remotely. So people would, I, I actually sold homes in the early 2000s sight unseen, um, you know, and that has evolved now based on our technology to where I don't have to just send them pictures. We could do virtual showings and, uh, or send them videos. And there's, I think there's a couple of main reasons why this has happened, especially last year, uh, the virus fears. Um, I had, uh, one of my clients that, uh, a real estate agent in Denver, his wife was at risk. And so he didn't feel safe going out and showing homes anymore because he was afraid he'd meet with somebody get it and bring it home to his wife who was super at risk. So, you know, what was he going to do? He, he, if he couldn't show homes or have the, the clients get into homes, what was he going to do? So he could use virtual showings. Uh, he hired, he did showing delegation through other agents, you know, so that was one of the, the uses and, and things that kind of catalyst for virtual showings. Um, obviously relocation is a big, big reason. Jessica, have you had experience with a lot of relo agents or, uh, buyers? That's really fascinating. You asked about agents. I am helping quite a few, even real estate agents as well. One New York, one Colorado out here to get their own home. Yes. I have been assisting quite a few, not from here. And that's due to, you know, as you mentioned, the changes of the times and all the awards that we've won over here in Manatee and Sarasota County. And I think everybody, the, the one buzzword I hear about is there's no inventory. There's no inventory, right? And so that creates this urgency that when a, when a home comes on the market, you got to get out there right away. And your client might be at work or, again, might be out of area. What are you going to do? How are they going to see this and be the first one in to, to, to get into this home? And so that's where, you know, a, 
I, I know a lot of agents who use the virtual showing going like, hey, you just stay at work. I'm going to go there and I'm going to hit you using a virtual, you know, platform. And we're going to go over some of those platforms, the different things that we use. Um, one caveat that I definitely wanted to mention is that always get permission from the listing agent to do video or a virtual showing. Um, there are a lot of privacy laws and a lot of stuff that go around this. Um, so you, you, you want to get permission and also, uh, agents have gotten in trouble for publicly posting a uh, video on, on somebody's home before, you know, you can only imagine how they would feel the, the, the seller would feel if you took a video of their home might've pointed out a few, uh, things that weren't so positive and put it on your social media feed. Not a good idea. So anyway, a uh, couple of things, goals that we'd love to have you, uh, achieve by the end of this, the presentation. One is the pre-showing interview and planning there. We used to be able to just go out, you know, print up an MLS sheet, meet the client and kind of do things on the fly with virtual showings. You got it. There's a lot more prep that, that takes place. Um, and there's some tools and tricks that we're going to teach you about the actual showing and then having a follow-up plan. You know, one thing, uh, you know, oftentimes you can gauge while you're at the property, whether the person's interested or not, it's a little bit different virtually. And I, I love this saying, you know, from Sam Walton, you know, you can't just continue, you know, uh, gosh, I can't even read it because my screen covers it. <laughs> I, I can read it for you. Want me to read it for you? Matt? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, it's, it Feel says you fine. can't just keep doing what works one time. Everything around you is, a, is changing. To succeed, stay out in front of change. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So let's go on to the next slide. Three essentials um, to doing virtual showings. And one of the things is we want we're always trying to meet the customer's needs, right? What meet their expectations. What do they expect from you? And so a lot of planning goes into this. What do they want? Is it location? Is it the size of the home? Is it the, you know, is it fixed up? You know, we need to know these things before we just start going out and doing this. How do they prefer to communicate? Uh, especially nowadays, some people prefer a phone call. Some per people prefer text. Some like email. Some like video chat. I mean, there's just me messenger. Everybody communicates differently. So we have to be sensitive to that and ask that question. Um, how do they want to view the homes? Do they want to go in person? You know, there, a lot of people are local. They can drop what they're doing, meet you out there. Awesome. That's totally cool. But if you're going to do virtual, there are some things we got to do. You know, act. You know, that's the scheduling, putting, putting them in order. What, what, what's a priority? What do you, what are we going to see first? What are we going to see last? Um, I remember, uh, a lot of people, if you've been in real estate for a while, you know, Floyd Wickman. And so Floyd, I, I was a graduate and he always taught me that you'd show the first home that you probably were the least likely to buy. And then you would move up until that last home was the one that you really thought they were going to like, you know, and, and a lot of that was, you're kind of like showing the dog and then you're showing the nice one. Again, you could put some planning in there so that they can compare and see and, and make good decisions. Um, and then ah, go back and then follow up. Obviously that is super important to do our, to do our follow up. And, and Matt, um, can I say how essential it is to go ahead and plan and what does your customer want? I'm buying a house up north and I sp specifically explained to the real estate agent, this is what I want to see in the home. And that was not what she was showing me. And I had to remind her, it was a little frustrating on my end. This is what I want to see in the home. And also, how do they want to view the homes? She didn't know how to show virtually. I was coaching and guiding her. She was struggling with her phone. So then it was on her iPad and then she couldn't get the technology to work. So I had to go ahead and create a Zoom link, send it to her. And if she would have planned more effectively, it would have been better use of all of our time. And, you know, she's a great agent. I, I'm not saying anything negative. It's just, 
what I've learned from that experience, how so important it is to plan. I've been at showings and other agents there have said, hey, we're attempting to do a virtual showing. This isn't working. Can you help guide us? And I find a lot of times I'm there helping other agents on, you know, how do they prefer to communicate? How do they want to view the homes? What is, what is it they want? This is so important, the planning part, um, especially now more than ever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if they don't know what they're doing, it's it's it becomes obvious. So the first part is obviously planning. You know, asking that client what what areas of the homes are important to you. Um, you know, one of the things that I also found out is <laughs> I've gone out with an iPhone and the person had an Android. How are we going to communicate? You know, and how are we using what platform? We're going to go over some different platforms that are out there. Um, live versus pre-recorded video. Uh, it is much easier to go out and actually do a recording without connecting with them uh, and just you know record the home and, and send that to them. But there are some things that a live video allow you to do where you can have that interaction. So you need to talk about that. What Which do you want? Are you going to be available when I'm out there doing this video? Um, where do they want you to start? Some people want to start on the street, you know, actually driving into the community. They want to see, you know, where are the shops? Where, you know, what what do the homes around it look like before you ever get inside the home? And we're, we're going to actually talk about that um, with Google Earth in a little bit. And who leads the tour? Sometimes the client leads, sometimes the I, the agent leads, you know, the client. It I've done it where the, the client is saying, hey, I'd like you to start into the kitchen. Oh, back up. I want you to go over here. Let's go upstairs now. Let's, you know, let's go to the backyard, whatever's important to them. And I'm just kind of following their lead and walking through the home. Uh, Jessica, anything you'd like to add to this? Well, I really like the question you have. Are there any particular areas you want me to focus on during the tour? Um, just based on my personal experience, the agent was focusing on areas I explained did not matter to me and what did matter. So really listen to your customers, your clients, and ask them, where do you want me to focus on? So you're not wasting everyone's time. I really like how you said live or pre-recorded. I'm discovering live is more in demand. That way you can engage a conversation. As you mentioned, can you go back to the spot? Could you check this out? And also the iPhone or Android for right method. Uh, rumor has it that now technology made it a little bit easier where they can go ahead and communicate with each other, but there will be times where it can go ahead and fail. So it's always good to plan ahead so it's not this fumbling, you know, for 5, 10, 15 minutes and wasting valuable time. Yep, yep. And I've had clients ask me, especially during the live, like, what does it smell like inside the home? You know, they're not there. They don't know, you know. Does it smell like, you know, cigarettes or cat, you know? <laughs> it's important to know because they're, you know, they buy the home, they move in, and they're like, why didn't you tell me it smelled like cat? You know, those are the things, even noise, um, your phone will pick up your voice really good, but they've, they've built them to where they, they don't show the surrounding noise so much, or they don't listen to the surrounding noise. But if there's a lot of traffic noise or you're back to a school or a playground, I mean, those are the things that you need to tell your client when you're out doing these, these, uh, tours. So I believe that this will work. I'm going to hit play and let me know if you cannot hear this. So, um, well, before we, I will just play it. Can you hear this? No. No. Okay. So you're not hearing it. Okay. So I'll go ahead and start this over and I will do the sound. All right, so one of the great tools that we use is Google Earth. You just enter in the address, click the arrow, and it will zoom in on that location. It gives you a great overview of the neighborhood and what's in the area. Definitely zoom in using the plus button. <coughs> Are the apartments. You can see all the busy of the street. Yep. Then, um, you keep zooming in, you can check in the neighbor's backyard. <clears throat> One of the things you can do is move around, spin it, see the different look views of it. 
there's a little guy that you can see on the bottom. Like if you drag him to the street, then you <clears throat> can get a street view, which I love. You can move up and down the street. You can spin the camera. Obviously, there's a tree right there, but you get the idea. This allows you to show your client the neighborhood like you were walking in that area or driving up and down the street. Matt, and this has same. saved me so much time. Um, awesome. I advise my clients to do this on their own and explore, and then they'll report back to me and say, you know what? Um, we didn't realize we were so close to, you know, this or this or far away from this, like we wanted to, or, you know, we didn't like a house to, you know, two doors down and it avoids us wasting time for everybody and going down there and actually doing a live showing. It, it saves time and, and cuts through everything. So I really like this tool. And I like how you mentioned on the previous slide, showing what's taking place um, outside and around the area. Google Earth is a great tool. It may not show everything currently that day. I just had a live um, virtual showing with a real estate agent up in New York and there was construction right across the street. Mm -hmm. And you know, when I was just touring the area, she saw that and that was really good. And then another one, they couldn't believe it right behind it, they were building a football field, right? So yeah. you've got to, you know, this is a great first step, but it's not going to always be the, you know, 100% final step. Yep, absolutely. It's just another tool to save time and, you know, give better service to our clients and save their time. Most of the, you know, that's what we're trying to do. So another thing that has definitely picked up is something we've always done is showing delegation, you know, so, uh, if you, there's a little chat or something on here, how many of the agents have either asked somebody to help them show a home or shown a home for somebody else? If you could write in the chat, like, yes, or a thumbs up, uh, I'd love to get a feel for how often this is happening, but based on what, um, my own personal experience, it happens all the time. Uh, at least uh, once or twice a month, I would get a call or I'd see a chat and a Facebook group going like, Hey, can you show a home? Or I've got somebody I'm not available. I'm out of town this weekend. You know, that's, so this happens all the time. And so there are some practices that go along with this that can help you to be more uh, successful. So the first one, you know, we all, we all ask, agents from our office or agents we have good relationships with and Facebook groups are one way that people will put that out. Having clear, what we found with this is clear communication with both your client and the agent is key. You know, the date, the time, the location, uh, oftentimes we'll have them share the number so that they can contact each other. If they're going to be early <laughs> running behind, you know, those are the things that you, you want to do. And then when you're communicating with the other agent, be very specific on the scope of work that they're doing. And if you're going to compensate them or just share, I'm hearing somebody in the background. So because some people have gone out, right, shown homes, and now they expect to share the client with them. Like, oh, am I getting a 25% referral or am I getting, you know, and all they did was show a home. You need to be really clear with this up front. And then there are obviously buyer showing services like Showami that agents use to connect with other agents, which, you know, for $39, $44 to $50, you can get a home shown. Uh, Matt, I've utilized apps. all. Matt, I've okay. utilized all of those. Um, I've gone to people I work with and say, hey, I can't get over this home, especially nowadays. People, like you said, are in this rush. Got to look at the house and... Um, so I've utilized people I work with. I've gone to Facebook groups. I've utilized Showami. I mean, I've had it where I'm showing a house and all of a sudden a customer says, hey, this house just came to the market. We want to go yep. see it now. So it's this whole, I do believe that this is going to be more of the future, the showing delegation, because we, we sometimes just can't be there at that time. Or like you said, if we're on vacation. So really be clear in communication with ones you meet in Facebook groups or people you work with, like you said, I've seen some people say, we'll pay you a percentage upon closing, we'll pay you a flat dollar amount. I've seen all different ways, or even Showami I've used as well. So this is, I believe, we're gonna see more of this in the future. And I even know of a great agent, um, I believe it's over at Remax, 
He said, I can't go show homes anymore because of the virus high risk. So he's now yep. creating relationships with different places and resources. So this is a future trend that I I'm going to challenge every person to create a plan and put this in your plan for the future. Yep. I mean, how many times have we missed out on deals because we couldn't get out there right away? You know, oh, I'm, I'm unavailable or, you know, because you can't be two places at twice uh, at once. So, no, it, I agree. Um, apps for live virtual showings. So <laughs> here's one. Of, here are some of the apps that we use uh, in the chat if you want to list other ones. But Zoom works really, really well. Most the thing that uh, the one thing I like about Zoom is that it doesn't matter whether you're on Android or you're on uh, iPhone. It works on both. As long as the person has the app, both people have the apps. It works beautifully. Um, the downside is it uses a lot of memory. And so if you don't have really good connection, Zoom can can mess up. Uh, FaceTime is an Apple product. So if both people are using Apple, you can connect that way. Uh, Facebook Messenger has really come on lately. They've, they've got a great platform, makes it easy for people to uh, do video. Uh, there's also for people who are Android to Android, the Android video call, a uh, Skype is one that a lot of agents use, WhatsApp, and then Google Hangouts is probably one of the more recent ones that have come up. Uh, Jessica, are there any others that you know of or that people have been using? Well, I just, these are the most popular ones I've seen and always be prepared to use a couple of them because once I use Zoom and then it didn't work for the other person, so we went over to WhatsApp. So just be, plan, um, be prepared to have a couple in your plan of action utilized. And it's really exciting to see Facebook, what they did an announcement and developing doesn't right. mean it's going to happen. They're working on it where they could digitally put you in a home. So it's going to be so fascinating to see the future. I could yep. be in a home showing and then my customer could digitally you know, be there interacting with me. It's just mind blowing on the technology and what's happening. And I just found out just recently the FaceTime, Apple and Androids are going to start communicating. So that's kind of exciting. I haven't tested that one yet though. <laughs> so <laughs> that just came out, but, um, and, and I like how you say I always have a backup plan. There have been some condos where the internet is just flat out, not working in a home, you know, or, the cell service doesn't work at all, which has been really fascinating. That's made a decision for some of my customers. They say we work from home and we see that it's not very good reception. So at that point, you just have to go ahead and do a video. And again, like you said, get permission and then send it. The best way to send it, I found, is through Google Drive or WhatsApp. Yep, yep, I agree, absolutely. Okay, so let's go to step-by-step. Step. So. First thing when you're out on the on the virtual showing is to ask questions, right? God gave us two ears and one mouth. So we always want to ask and then listen to what our clients are telling, what what's important to them. Just because, you know, the landscaping is important to you doesn't necessarily mean that that's what's important to your client. Um, make sure that you have agreed on the technology and the route, what you know, what are the priorities, where you're gonna go how you're gonna communicate, whether it's gonna be in person or video, um, in education. You, we, you do this all the time, right? You're in real estate, this is your, your job. You're always going out there showing homes. They don't necessarily know the process. They don't know what to expect. So the more you can prepare them, the better off you're gonna be. Uh, be safe and aware. I know that there's a, a safety class that's coming up uh, later on today in the in the presentation, definitely want to know what's going on. A couple of things that we do is we we ask people, you know, walk behind them, let them go in front, show up ahead of time, open the doors, the windows, look, case the place out, make sure you have an exit route, uh, let people know that you're going to be there, where you're going, what your schedule is, and those are some of the things that, as far as safety goes, are really important. Um, we already talked about asking permission from the listing agent, uh, having a clean camera. We've all seen the foggy, you know, uh, videos where you're like, oh, it's kind of like I'm underwater or something. Clean your camera. Super, super simple, but you got to do it. Having your camera facing out then rather than being on you. You know, I've seen people walking around, 
you know, and they're, they're telling them about the home, but the video is facing them. That does no good. You know, you want it to be out facing. And most of us know there's a little button on the bottom that you click that turns the, the camera out facing. That's super important. Starting outside the home, uh, typically in the front, making sure you get a picture of the, the screen and then, you know, panning out. Uh, those are some of the things that you want you want to do. Uh, go slow. It's let the person take it in. You know, one of the biggest problems is people going too fast and it's shaky or it's dizzying when you're watching it from, you know, a small screen. Uh, ring the doorbell, make sure somebody's home, turn all the lights, open the drapes, let the light in, and, um, you know, cover all aspects of the home. Take your camera, pan up, pan down, uh, go into the utility room or, you know, all the all the little crevices that don't show up on the, you know, the, can the pictures that they post online. And again, you want to make it as interactive as you possibly can. Ask them what they would like you to highlight. You know, where do you see your furniture? Ask them lots of questions. Then always, always assume somebody is listening because they are, especially with modern technology. I'll, I'll tell the story about Alexa. And so I was, uh, I was showing, showing a home to some clients uh, up in Colorado and I was down in the kitchen. I'm like, hey, notice they've got an Alexa. Be careful what you say. They could be listening to us. And, you know, so, you know, don't be overly excited, but you know, also don't disparage the home. You don't want to embarrass them. And so anyway, we're finished. I finished telling them about that. We went upstairs and we're going through the master bedroom. I'm like, look, there's an Alexa. And this Alexa kicks on. It goes, Alexa, play love songs. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so, you know, we're like, oh, this is so <laughs> funny that that happened. But um, yeah, somebody is always listening to you. Um, I don't know if Hello? you have, can you hear me? Um, yes. I'm just watching a, webinar i can hear someone <laughs> i don't know who's in charge of muting people but i keep yeah i sold the table and chairs or the two the okay. three chairs tables so i don't know if, if yeah. jesse can do his mute it's got to be jesse he's got the admin yeah i don't ha i don't have the admin on it uh okay anyway utilize tools to measure the walls uh there's some yeah. really cool apps that it's just the measure app in the Apple phone, that's definitely one that you would want to use. And you can just basically, you know, hey, what's the size of that room? Well, it's 12 by 14. You mm -hmm. can measure it using your your app. At the end, ask if there are any areas that they want to go you to go back to or highlight. Definitely. Hey, Matt, can you go to the previous page? There was something there that reminded me of something. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, had I a guess I'll just have to have an aha moment. Apparently someone's selling around what too. I was thinking I would do tomorrow. Um, hopefully they don't say anything, you know, privately. No, I'm trying to everyone's out. listening, right? <laughs> um, so anyhow, so the tripping part, the previous page, if you go there, Matt. Okay. I actually saw someone almost yeah. trip and go into a pool. So be really yeah. careful yeah. when you go there yeah. to really see lay the land i guess you could say you know where's the pool where are the pets where are people what's taking place right um i wanted to go ahead and, and add that in there and i actually had someone hiding on the floor in a blanket we didn't oh, know yeah. <laughs> you got balls we, we didn't know if he was alive or dead or yeah, yeah. <laughs> so be really careful oh, where you're the toy at box. and the toy box are some balls um so anyhow i hear now someone talking about yeah look out for toys toy box right so always be aware of what's around you. So there's no, cause when you're on your phone and video, you can easily trip or fall or, you know, encounter something, right? Well, yep. if you look at his I post, to go ahead I would and, say he's and judging add us. That, so yeah. Yep. And Matt, there's something else I spoke a couple of weeks ago on safety. Yeah. Uh, always, like you said, always check with your broker, your state laws, everything else. But a lot of people, if they meet <clears throat> someone for the first time, they want to meet outside and do like Change a video it. with someone else, you know? Um, so that's something else to keep in mind too, for the new technology and showing homes. It's almost a little safety. So if I'm going to go show a home and I meet with someone outside, say hello, you know, it's check, maybe you're checking their ID or not, you know, yeah. again, check your broker and the laws and rules, but you can yeah. say, Hey, I'm going to have Matt here. Matt's going to join us virtually, you know, Matt's going to tour I'm the home with us. Say, Hey Matt, it kind of cuts down on that. 
anything yeah. bad happening. There's a phone conversation going on between a V Marsh and uh, yeah. somebody Heron. All right, and now we can uh, hear you. I want to monitor that. I uh, don't know how to. It's been uh, kind of a weird conversation. So. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Whoever is. <laughs> See, people can always it, be listening. Yes. This just uh -huh. proves the point. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. And this brings uh, up pre preparation, right? The more prepared that we are ahead of time, uh, this is something we should have uh, kind of over with everybody ahead of time to be able to do that. I don't know if you can watch if you can hear this video i just can you hear that at all no but i love this video i've seen this matt can you please put it in the chat because yes. this agent yeah um what is he was start real estate is that what it said um yep. i can't remember where okay start real estate he did a fantastic job of conducting this i've had some people say that they got sick and they felt like they went through a roller coaster right after touring a home with their agent Yep. He's done. Don did an amazing job on how to actually show a home. So I believe that should be in the chat below and everyone hands down should watch that. Yep. I will get that link and send it out. Um, right. So anyway, the next thing that with live video, one of the problems is obviously internet can be spotty. You just, you have no idea if you're going to get a hundred percent connection or if you're not, and, you know, some of that's caused by slow download speeds. It could be just, you know, lapse in service. So there are some solutions to that one. If you're out doing a video yeah. showing and it all of a sudden stops, the main, uh, or it's- Yeah, I only, when you, body. when I know you're upset, then I like ask, you know, how, or, uh, yeah. and I don't say, well, what happened? I just say, are you then, okay? I don't know if we can ask Victoria. Victoria, can you turn your sound off? Or mute yourself. Right. No. Um, anyway, so a couple of things you can do. Pause, wait for the data to catch up, close the app, reopen it. One of the things that I've had to do before is just to stop trying to do live and just do a video recording of it. Once you do the video recording, you've got it captured. You can send right. it to them either via text or via email, but uh, some of the things that you're going to want to do is definitely uh, pause, wait for the data to catch up, close the app, and reopen it. A um, couple of the bigger, um, biggest. I, I've yeah. encountered that, Matt. If no one's encountered that, they will. Right. I, I promise you, you will. <laughs> so yep. Always be planned and prepared. Yeah, for, they're for yeah, connection. Yeah, they, you do. They yeah. do do. So like, obviously, the camera lens gone. facing is the insurance. biggest no nos yeah. or the biggest mistakes that people make is yes. facing you rather than facing the property. They already know what you look like. You're right. showing the property. Uh, try not to start inside right. the property. For two months. Start at the exterior. Take a picture of the 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 name or the property address. Move inside. Pan. Keep it slow. Uh, another one is not being interactive, just telling them and just tell, tell, tell. Again, you've, you've got two ears, one ear, one mouth. Ask, ask questions, get feedback. Um, try not to move the camera too fast, being jerky. You know, you take your time, walk through, right. slowly yeah. pan. Well, he started, also, you want to pan from the corner of the room of rather than up. the middle. So you go to a corner and you just do the pan. To us. Hey, hey, uh, Matt, don't say, yes, go ahead. When the other person's talking... Um, this is being recorded and they can edit that part out later. Okay. So when that person's talking, we could just wait until they're done and then state it. That's my recommendation. Okay. So that way everybody can actually get this mm -hmm. in the recording, the good information. Yeah. Yep. And then yeah. uh, obviously don't say anything inside the home that you don't want the seller to hear because of Alexa, Ring, and all the other modern technology that's out there. Uh, showing time. Um they have come up with some great new features. Um, and if the sound from my computer were working, that would be, I would show you this video, but the, and I'll also put this in the chat, but some of the things that, and yeah, everybody well, has did, different views on under, showing time, right? Yeah. And my experience is most of the agents use it, Yeah. you know, and in, in my market, I'm actually in Fort Myers, Florida. 
And I would say 80% of the showings are through showing time. And well, and he needs to help them. around the house instead of laying on but, the bed when Shay's sleeping, it's like dust the furniture or do something, you know, you don't have to, you, have to, you know, and she needs to learn to sleep with noise. I mean, um, I vacuumed when you guys were here and she slept through the vacuum cleaner. So. Yes. So with, with showing time, some of the new tools is that you can map your showing and add, it'll actually suggest showings on route, which is kind of cool. Um, it gives you a messenger tool that you can message directly to the other agent through their app. Um, they've just got yeah. some really good new tools. So definitely want to check that out. I will also include that video link uh, here. No. And, and then the last thing is definitely follow up. Uh, you're going to yeah. have, you have to have these real conversations with people because they may have unrealistic right. expectations of what they're going to get in this market, right? They saw a home yeah. a year ago and they're like, I could get that for 300,000. Mm -hmm. Well, the market's gone up. That doesn't happen anymore. So you're going to have to have those conversations. Ask them, what did they like? What yeah. did they not like? Just like you would do on a regular showing. Are there other homes that you'd like to preview? You know, always, if they don't find what well, they're looking ear, for, you're always just, suggesting. You know, that's how I used to have to sleep with you you're in suggesting the chair other is your ear, previews. ear infections. Uh, and then always ask, do they want to put in an offer? So, yeah, I, I love but that. Just to ask. be, could they just get plugged? You know, they. And, and Matt, it's really good to have those real and raw conversations and the follow up, not while you're inside yeah. the home. Yeah. I, I really like how you how you highlighted and stressed that because people could be right. listening. Right. Yep. It's like we're listening to someone else's conversation right now. <laughs> I know it's so hard. Anyway, <laughs> I wanted to open it up for questions and answers. Please yeah. ask me a question. I'd love to have some engagement yeah. in, uh, in the chat or however you want to. I'm going to actually stop share. See if I can. You know, thank you, Matt, nice. for doing this. I believe my favorites were the planning, and the he's going to do the front. Yep. The te technology, being prepared, what hiccups to be prepared for, and how to plan for that. And I really like how you said, "Go slow, utilize the Google Earth yeah. ahead of time." Yeah, time. that needs to come out. Okay. And I want to say, "Go slow," because I once showed a house in person with my customer. Right. Right. Another agent was there. She just said, can I just hop in same time as you guys? We said, fine, no worries. Right, yeah. right. She was doing a video. Cool. It went so fast and didn't highlight some important things. It was very, um, it's one of those moments you wish it was recorded. My customer's eyeballs were so big. They said, she said, it looks great. Okay, it was only about a three minute video. You know, let's talk about putting an offer. And there were major flaws right. and issues on that home. Yep. And um, my, 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 all right, well, we'll saying, just, I'll just, I'm not, if dad says something about going over to see Shay, I'll just say, well, you go see him. I got to so do whatever, get these chats or I'll just tell him she's people. not feeling good that way. Yeah. So my, my customers were saying that if that was our agent, we wish that she would have gone slower yeah. and highlighted the whole home. So we could have seen these potential pitfalls, you know? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any okay. questions that people have? Too. Bye. I'm going to get those video links. That's what I'm working on right now. Okay, fantastic. So does anyone want to share um, their experiences doing video tours and the pros and the cons? Anyone want to share? Now I see everyone got muted. Of course, at the end. <laughs> uh, All right. So, so everyone. Thank you. That Matt. is the how to show a home virtually. And I'm going to get the one from uh, showing time here in a little bit. So 
it looks like now everyone was muted. So if anyone has anything to say, you're going to have to mute. <laughs> no, no, you can't. That's funny. Now, Mike says, thanks much. Thank you, Mike. Mike, I would love to hear what your favorite point was. Can you hear me? I can. Yes. You know, I love the idea of the uh, the the live or the pre-recorded. You know, I hadn't thought about a pre-recorded. I, you know, everybody thinks they want live, and um, you know, I think the idea of recording it ahead of time may be a good idea. Look what, find out what they want. You know, and going ahead and recording it ahead of time, so you don't run into snags and trip, and uh, you know, have some fumbles there. So it was good. Thank you very much. It's a great concept. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. It was good to see you here. Okay, perfect, Matt. So you shared the two links, um, the one on how to do a virtual showing. Yep. And then the other one's on showing time, the Vimeo. You know, at the, and there are so many tools that we have at our you know, disposal that the better you are at using your tools, the more you can wow your customer, you know. Um, and so one of the things that we ask people to do is to practice, you know, before you go out and do your first show, virtual showing, it's a good idea to go, you know, take a friend or, you know, connect with somebody, do go through the house and ask them, Hey, how's this look from your standpoint? You know, as somebody that, you know, that it's not a live, it's not a client, but you you start to get more comfortable with it. It's like anything, the more you do it the better, you know, the better you're going to be at it. That's for sure. I've encountered so much, like show us the crack, show us the ceiling, zoom in on the floor, um, knock on the wall and see what's behind it. I mean, there's just so many different, you know, questions I've been asked in the virtual, you know, showings part of it. Yep. Yep. And a lot depends also on what price range of homes that you're looking at based on the, you know, those clients are going to have different expectations, you know, um, that's just the way that it is. Joyce says, I love the suggestion of Google Earth gives a buyer feel for the neighborhood, which is difficult to capture in a video or photo. Absolutely, Joyce. I do too. I've had people, I've had people say, okay, Jessica, we're interested in this home and they're out of the area. And I say, okay, great. Go to Google Earth, click on a little person, walk around and they say, oh, we didn't, we didn't, this isn't the area for us. Well, save all of his time, right? Saved all of his valuable time. You know, time is money. So. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, that positive feedback. I always love to hear what different people's ahas. I'm always learning. And this is always evolving and changing, like we discussed, Matt. Yep. Well, That's our market is, is changing and evolving. Right. And the expectations of our clients there, it's, it's not a static thing. If we can't do what we did two, three years ago and expect it to work, you know, the, the cheese there, the, the cheese has moved. We've got to follow and kind of go where, where people want us to go and, and give them what they're expecting. So I just, I'll share an experience. I believe people find valuable and may give them some new ideas or insights. So I have some customers, they're up by Tampa area. That's not my area and they know that I'm very upfront and they're very insistent, you know, help us, help us, help us. So I don't have time to always, you know, get in my car and drive an hour up there. And sometimes it's last minute, they wanna see the house, right? And they're very aware it's not my market. So what I'll do is I'll go to showami.com and I'll have another agent go show the home. What I can do though, is I've actually joined with Zoom. So I get to see what my customer sees from a virtual perspective and the agent actually showing the home, I could say, slow down here, back up here, highlight this in addition to my customer. And I just closed on a home. I never even physically had to go show any of the homes. You know, I just closed on a home. We were able to do it all um, virtually that way. So I always join my customer out of the area virtually and the, and the agent would actually show it in person. We wrote an offer and got accepted and closed. So I never even had to physically go there. Right. And in the past, you would have referred that, right? You'd have said, Hey, here's, you know, give me a 25% referral or whatever percentage that you agreed upon. And now you get to keep the commission and, and you just basically paid for showings, 
and I had the assistance of another agent. We've always helped each other out. You know, that's, that's kind of that, that's our culture as real estate agents. We're trying to help each other. We're trying to help our clients. And the more, the easier you make it for your client to see a home, the more successful you're going to be, period. You know, and a lot of agents will do that. Like, instead of going like, Hey, you just have me, you know, I'm offering you a team of agents that, you know, at the drop of a hat can be wherever to meet you, to show the home, to do a virtual showing, you know, that, that service. And, and honestly, that's what people expect. We've become an Amazon society, right? I want to shop. I want to click and I want it to show up on my doorstep the next day. Mm -hmm. And housing is kind of that way now where they're like, okay, I could get this from Amazon. How come I can't get that from you? You know? And, and we feel that pressure, right? I always feel it as an agent, like, oh, you know, they got to go see this home. I got to jump and, you know, and, and the downside of that is you're always on you're, you you always feel like you're working. You never get time off and, you know, having the help that you need, either another agent in your office through delegation or one of these services like Shawami, it, it gives you back control of your schedule without forcing you to give up your life. And, and that's one of the things that I had a hard time was, was life work balance, right? You because know, how do you, you know, let's say your spouse works during the week and they get weekends off. Well, if you're in real estate, you know, you're off more during the week than you are the weekend because that's when your clients want to go see homes. So, you know, that would, that's always, you know, you can't be two places at once and you really, we, and I think it's more important and a lot of us are realizing it's more important for us to be with our family and I could have somebody, anybody show the home. It doesn't have to be me. You know, if, Very, if they fall yeah. in love with that house, I'm going to run out there. Yeah. I'll drop what I need to, because that's the one, but I mean, how, how many times have you shown a home that you knew they didn't want, right? You know, you're like, you've given me your list of criteria and this is, doesn't check any of the boxes, but you want to see it, mm-hmm. you know, and you, and you give up all of your, you know, family time and, and, you know, anyway, it's not, it's not worth it. Delegate. So, so I have multiple coaches and one of them, he's been in the real estate industry since the eighties. And he, he said, oh, wow. He said, this is absolutely the future because I'm, I'm one of my trainings says, if you could just save one hour a day yep. over a year, it's 365 hours divided by a traditional 40 hour work week. That's nine weeks. So if you can save one hour a day in your business, in your life, you're gifting yourself nine weeks of time. So my coach fell in love with you know, show on me or utilizing an agent in your office or finding some Facebook group to be part of that plan, not only to have that work-life balance, right? Also for expansion and growth, if you really want to go ahead and expand your real estate business. Yep. So um, anyhow, I just want to say anybody out there, you know, who may be struggling with that work-life balance, really look at having other agents possibly show. Doesn't mean you have to give up all control. Like I said, I had one from Canada I never showed one home. It was an hour up north and we closed on it. She actually um, traveled in. She showed up my doorstep with champagne and flowers. She was so happy, right? But I joined on every virtual one with her and we had someone physically there showing it. So just expand what's possible for being of service, your business and that work-life balance, which I'm huge on work-life balance. That's, That's something I'm a big fan of. I wrote about it in one of my books, Create the Perfect Day and Create a Wild Life. Um, so I'm, I'm very much about that. So, yep. Oh, yeah. Anyone anyone else want to chime in on that, that our conversation here, what we're saying, either in the chat, unmute yourself, chime in. We'd love to hear from you. I think um, one of the things that we keyed in on is relationships, right? Real estate is such a relationship business and obviously the relationship with our client. That's, you know, how engaged are we? Are we calling them? Are we communicating? Are we sending them properties? Are we uh, with meaningful 
information, showing ourselves to be the local professional. It's equally as important to build those relationships with other agents, right? Um, the listing agent. You don't know, you know, call simple things. Call people back when they leave you a voicemail when it's your listing. You know, you don't know, you know, the next time that you've got a buyer and that guy that you didn't return their phone call is the listing agent. You don't think he's going to remember, you know, that you didn't call back or you were rude or, you know, you had a bunch of, you know, several multi offers and I didn't do it fairly. I didn't communicate well. Uh, things like that will hurt your business. And you've got to realize we're all in this together. We're, we, it is a, it is a relationship business. And so just as important as our relationship with our clients is the relationships that we build amongst one another. And whether that's through delegation, whether that's through, you know, just showing and, and communicating with one another. Um, I'm on several nationwide groups, uh, Facebook groups. I'm on several coaching uh, groups. And I think that's one of the biggest, um, you know, biggest pet peeves that agents have is that agents aren't communicating with each other. And it's, you know, I get it. We, we get overwhelmed, right? <laughs> you get all the text from your clients. You get all the communication from your family. You get all the communication from, you know, it's just constantly coming at you. But we have to give that feedback, you know, when we do a showing. We have to, you know, call them when they when they give us a call. And even though we've got 20 offers on the house, I, I suck it up. I call all 20 of those agents back and I communicate and, you know, I play fair. I think that's... And, and they appreciate that. And later on, when I have a buyer and they're the, on the listing side, guess what? That pays big dividends because they know that I was professional and I did a good job. Yes. I, it doesn't matter what company you're with. Um, it just comes down to being kind, professional, caring. Um, yeah. At the end of the day, I mean, that, that's all it comes down to. I don't know. I'm against the philosophy of only people in my company. I've heard the only people in my company being kind or nice. No, no, you should be kind and respectful to all people. And yeah, what good goes around comes around that saying. Absolutely. And Joyce, Joyce made me think of something else that she may like to know about. And I love to hear from others on this. I go through a journey with my clients and customers. Matt, you probably do too. We're really narrowing down what's important to them. And before we even go look at a house, so for example, um, I have a customer right now who says, it's so important for me to have a fence. Okay, great. Well, you wanna go look at this house, it has no fence. The association doesn't allow a fence. Do you really wanna go look at it? No, I don't. So ask those key questions so you're not wasting everyone's time, um, you know, running around too and looking at, at houses that may not be a fit for them. Yeah, and that that is... <laughs> That is the downside of virtual showings is the the people then want to see everything. You know, it's like if they had to physically go out and look at it and take their own time, they'd be like, well, eh, I might not really like that one. But when it's you going out for you to show and it's your time, you know, they're a little bit more free. So it is really important to ask them the questions and go like, all right, do you really think this is something you really want to see? Is this, you know. Does this check all the boxes or at least most of the boxes? Uh, it's super, super important. I'm trying to think of other tech tools that have, you know, kind of revolutionized um, our business just in the in recent years. Um, obviously, Zoom is probably the, the biggest one in the last two years that, you know, being able to meet virtually, it, you know, but there are some downsides to that tech, right? How do you build trust electronically? You know, how do how do I build trust? Because that's for them to write an offer, they got to trust us. Mm -hmm. You know, so yep. Oh, Good. I agree, Joyce. Joyce yep. had a great point. Um, priorities change for buyers in their search process. Absolutely, and even reality check. I had a customer. I said, okay, this is everything you want. It doesn't exist. We'll go look because they insist on we look. And at the end, they said, yeah, it's the unicorn. Okay, well, now it's a process of elimination. What's most important to you and what's not important to you? And yep. you, you, you stated the three top um, reasons why that the virtual showing is moving forward. Another one I'd add in there, Matt, is 
time I'm noticing for people. Some people may live local and they say, we don't want to get our car and go over there. We just want you to virtually show it. And another one to add in there too is generational. Um, there's, you know, generations, some generations are just so used to virtual. They don't want to do it in person. Um, you know, it just, it's just what they prefer, right? So some other different things to think about. Yeah, definitely found, uh, which makes sense, right? The, the, the younger generations are embrace technology way faster than my, my generation. Um, and they, they're not afraid of it. You know, their computer tells them what they like in many ways, right? It reads all their analytics, read their Facebook, read their Google searches, read everything. And it, and it communicates them what they're looking for. And we've all had cookies follow us around where, you know, we search for a bicycle or whatever. And then pretty soon we're seeing ads for bikes pop up everywhere. You know, when an agent or when a, a millennial looks for a home, you know, they expect us to send them homes or to communicate and, you know, very quickly with what they're looking for and to know what they're looking for. Uh, it's, it's so, so different, you know, than what it when than what it used to be for sure. Abs absolutely. Oh, also a bonus here too, the new way of showing homes. If you are showing a home in person, you and I had that conversation, Matt, about yep. shake hands, you not shake hands. So what I'm doing now is I just go like, like this, I put my hands together and I just bow and I say, this is the new way to greet. And I've had some people say, well, we're fully vaccinated. And I say, that's great. I just want to be respectful, vaccinated or not. We got to be really careful. I take this virus serious. So I'll just go and greet you like this instead of shaking hands. Or if you do shake hands, have, you know, the hand sanitizer there too, right? Um, yeah. So just so many different ways of showing homes in person, virtually, however it may be. So we have two minutes. Does anyone have any additional insight or questions for us before we wrap up? I think there's a couple, couple of things on safety, um, kind of circling, circling back to that a little bit. Cause we, we, you and I, when we were preparing this, we talked about online safety and the phishing things, you know, where people are trying to steal your identity or, you know, you see, you know, my clients like I saw this home and it's like an amazing deal. And it's just somebody trying to steal their information. Um, you know, we have to be very aware you know, just because you get an email going like, I want to go see this home, that might not be a real person behind that. You got to check everybody out, you know, as, as much as you possibly can. Um, and then uh, being sensitive to what your clients, I've asked, you know, are you a mask, no mask? And, you know, ask those questions. It's, it's awkward, right? It's divisive in many ways in our society. But if you don't ask, you could offend Mm -hmm. And we don't want to do that. I agree. I love that you brought that up. Times have changed so much in so many different ways. And I feel like it's constantly evolving. And speaking of smell, I, I don't know how they can accomplish it. Someone is attempting technology where you can smell through your computer. <laughs> my mind, my, how is that possible? I have no idea. Anyhow, it's I have work. no idea either. They're, they've got crazy things. You know, all the stuff we saw on Star Trek isn't going to be far-fetched very long. You know, it's going to be like, you just zoom in, you know, you get re-atomized at, at the house to see it. I don't know. I completely agree. Well, thank you, everyone. Yep. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Sorry about the tech, technological difficulties. Um, I'm sure uh, we'll be able to edit that out in the recording. Mm -hmm.